All right, guys, so here is some video with the Google Pixel 5a, 5G. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it this way. And you can see that even when I'm walking, this video is incredibly stable here. So if you're into super stable video, you're gonna really love this Google Pixel 5a, 5G. All right, so here's the video coming from the iPhone 12, and let's go ahead and turn it this way as we did with the Pixel, and you can see Pretty good video overall. I, I like the brightness, I like the clarity here of the iPhone 12, and I think they do both do a fantastic job. Let me know which one you like better down below. So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. Google Pixel 5a, 5G versus iPhone 12 for comparison here. Now, why am I making this comparison? Well, I think it's because the Google Pixel 5a, 5G does have quite a bit of offering by comparison to this phone right here, which I do think has been one of the best sellers, but also these features are a lot more closer than the price would suggest. The Google Pixel 5a 5G is up for pre-order right now, up for grabs for 449, and look at all this phone you're getting right here. Now, the iPhone similarly equipped with storage would cost you around 849 with tax, you're looking at close to $900, so almost twice the price and definitely not twice the features. Let me explain why. We'll begin here with the body of both phones. We have a metal back here for the Google Pixel 5a 5G. It is of a matte variety, kind of more similar to the 12 Pro Honestly, the iPhone 12 here does have a glass back and it's beautiful. It comes in multiple different colors, aluminum rails, but we have a unibody design there for the Google Pixel 5a. And on the front, they both have, you know, Gorilla Glass on the front, but I still put a screen protector because it can still show scratches. If you get little nicks and mars on it, you might see some hairline scratches, stuff like that. But they're both pretty sturdy and well-built devices. I will say this Apple logo does get a bit more smudgy then this G logo down here, the Google logo right there. This is just a cleaner feel overall. But the iPhone 12, I think with the glass feels a little bit more premium, but not by a lot. Now, the weight of them, the iPhone 12 is a bit lighter because it does have a smaller display. It does have a smaller battery, so it brings it right around 164 grams. So the weight of this thing, you know, it's feather. It's pretty lightweight. But the Google Pixel 5a 5G does have a pretty decently lightweight as well for the size of the display. Now, this also does have IP67 dust and water resistance. That's something you didn't see on some other Pixel devices that came before it. This one does have IP68, so it's a little bit better there. But again, we're talking about twice the price and for one IP rating better. I, I'm not sure I'm gonna pay extra just for that feature. Now, let me discuss the displays and how they are similar on both devices. So with the Google Pixel 5a 5G, you do get yourself a 415 PPI display here. Now that display is of the OLED variety and it does have pretty good brightness outdoors as well in comparison to some older pixels. You've seen it in my review. If you didn't see that, go ahead and check it out. It'll be linked down below. But this one also does give you 2400 by 1080, so it's a pretty sharp overall panel and it does have always on display as you've seen at the beginning of this review. And there's a couple more things you can do with this display versus the iPhone 12. Like you can tweak it between boosted, natural, and adaptive, whereas the iPhone 12 just kind of gives you the way it is calibrated out of the box. Now I know there's things you can do in accessibility, but that's not a true way to go ahead and tweak the display panel. So I would give it the pixel when it comes to customization. So the iPhone 12 does have a premium display as well. It's 6.1 inches, so it's a little bit smaller, but don't be fooled by that size being a little bit smaller on paper because it does have a 19.59 aspect ratio, which means that this display right here is a bit wider feeling than the pixels over here at 20 by nine. So the 20 by nine gives us a tall and narrow kind of feel. It does make this phone easier to one hand and what Android 12 gonna bring one handed mode, that's gonna be sweet as well. So do keep that in mind. They're actually a, a little bit closer than you might think. We do have a punch hole right there versus this notch. And quite honestly, the iPhone 12 does have a little bit of a more screen to body ratio regardless of the notch. The iPhone does come in at 86% and the Pixel 5a 5G does come in 
at 85%. So it's a little bit less by a hair, but pretty similar about panels, but I would give it the iPhone with the brightness. It's definitely a brighter panel. In terms of accuracy and color, I would say they're pretty close. I do think the iPhone's display looks a little bit sharper, a little bit more premium. However, the Pixel display for the money is really darn close. Like, I mean, this is only like a couple points away. So let's talk about how they are similar and how they are different in the software. Well, first of all, the obvious one, duh, Nick, this is Android versus Apple. Uh, we get it, you know, it's Google's operating system. But where they're really similar is that the Pixel experience for me is like the iPhone of Android. And the reason I say that is because it's a Google-fied experience. It's Google's hardware and Google software. Now, not 100%, we do have a Qualcomm Snapdragon and 765 chip in here so that's not fully google's hardware the tensor chip and the pixel 6 coming will be that but what i'm saying is that it gives you the software pure vanilla android with this being google's phone as well so it's a bit more optimized than some other android phones and that means even though you don't have a premium processor the top level processor it performs just like one because it's so well optimized it also doesn't need as much ram as other android smartphones this thing does come in with a pretty decent six gigabytes of ram and it doesn't really slow it down whatsoever it's a very smooth experience and that's very similar to how apple has its own hardware has its own software on here it's a very similar overall take and that's a really good thing because this software does get updated more frequently on the pixel device for patching security and stuff where the iphone does win is longer software support this one will get a minimum of three years i think this is going to change with the way google's going with the pixel 6 we might see five years but here on the iphone you are going to get five years of updates we're almost a year in so ios 15 will be the first one so i would say if you want android os and you want it clean simple like like a very similar way you would experience apple's ios like very much apple centric this is very google centric so i think you will like that and being that this is a mid-range processor we'll talk about that in a minute it doesn't really slow the performance down. Now the iPhone 12 over here does have the Apple A12 and I will give it the win here because it's definitely a snappier, faster phone overall here for the iPhone 12. I'll notice that right away. However, you gotta, you gotta give it credit because the Pixel 5a 5G is a snappy performer even though it's running that 765G. This is a concern of some people who have been worrying about buying this phone right here or pre-ordering it. Don't worry about it. This 765G at 2.4 gigahertz has eight cores. It's clocked in at, you see it right there. And then we have six gigs of RAM. Remember the optimizations Google puts on top of here, make sure this phone runs nice and snappy. So I will tell you as somebody who tests a lot of flagship phones, the 5A 5G performs very similar to those except for gaming. Let's just put it that way. If you're gonna do hardcore gaming, steer clear of this. If you're just a regular smartphone user, you're gonna be hard pressed to find a difference in this CPU performance versus a flagship. The only reason I'm giving the iPhone 12 to win because it technically does have the faster chipset inside of it. This one costs almost twice as much for less storage. Now, yes, the way their storage system works is a a bit different. Google does give you a bit more storage for cloud as well, right out the box, 15 gigs standard, you get five gigs iCloud. And I believe they're doing this promotion where you get the Google one three months free if you pre-order the Pixel 5a 5G. Also 128 gigs out the box, this one 64. The con though, this one doesn't go up to 256 gigs. You can get the iPhone 12 with 256 gigs, but then you're pushing close to a thousand bucks. All right, so let's talk about the cameras. Now, the reason why, this is one of the main reasons why these phones are so similar. They both have dual camera setups and they both have two cameras that do basically the same thing. They go ultra wide. This one goes ultra wide 0.6, this one goes 0.5. So the ultra wide on the iPhone 12 is a bit more wide. However, Google does have some software that allows you to go 2X and you can get results that are just as about as sharp as the you know regular optical zooms. Now you can zoom in up to 7X here on the Google Pixel 5a 5G. Over here you can zoom up to five. So the camera system and what they offer is very similar. You can see they both have portrait modes and you can do those portrait modes on the selfie as well. They both have video that can go up to 4K at 60. However, the iPhone does have HDR video in the HD modes, but for real, pretty similar overall, you know, offerings here. And then if we go over here, you see a panoramic mode on this one, panorama mode over here for the Google Pixel. I will say that the iPhone does have the better front-facing camera. It just has a sharper 
4K 60, you can only do 1080 on the front. This is where the pixel is showing, you know, where it did make a sacrifice. However, the actual camera quality from those photos on the front is pretty good. So I'm gonna be done talking about them here. Just take a look at some of these side-by-side -side samples, compare them, and let me know which one you think performed better. All right guys, so here's the front camera of the Google Pixel 5a 5G. Now I have pretty long arms and on this camera, my arm is fully extended. So the angle is quite close to your face. Uh, I hope Google in the future does fix this because it's quite an extension, but overall the actual quality of the video, pretty darn good I would say, but I would use something like a selfie stick or something to extend it if you do have shorter arms but this is the google pixel 5a 5g let me know your thoughts down below now in contrast my arms only extended just a bit here for the iphone 12 but the quality overall looks a little bit brighter if you ask me it's still very good here a lot of people do like the skin tones here of apple iphone 12 but let me know your thoughts overall on this one down below if you think it's better or not i do think it's pretty fantastic as well i don't have to extend my arm quite as far but one might be more stable than the other. Let me know down below. All right, so let's go ahead and do some running. You can kind of see that's how it perform in motion. All right, so here's the iPhone 12. Let's go ahead and do some running. Holding it with just my hand, and that's how it performs in motion. So let's go ahead and take a look at the audio here. Click boosted there. More natural, you can go natural and I could dull it down a bit. And one of the nicest things is you can really enjoy this display. So the loudspeaker is definitely more on the bottom here. And by all the beautiful wallpaper. You'll see it just gets much dimmer. It in here. This is the one that will come out of the box. It's trying to show you that this is not. But it does have a stereo sound and it's quite loud here. But one value add as well is that headphone jack talked about that in the full review now over here for the iphone 415 pixels per inch which is up you immediately notice the iphone 12 just sounds much more rich much more it, it does sound like a higher quality speaker like two pixels per inch over the 4a 5g so it's basically it definitely has a better stereo speaker but the pixel 5a 5g has headphone jack and they both have bluetooth 5.0 so they connect similarly fast as one another. Now here is where the Pixel is just gonna walk away with an easy victory over the iPhone 12. Now the iPhone 12 is super optimized, so this phone makes it through a day for most people. But the Pixel 5a 5G, I would bet can make it through two days. And the reason I say that is this has a 4,680 milliamp hour battery. This one right here, a 2815, this is almost twice the size of this battery right here, and it's in a similar size body. So Pixel is packing the battery life. In addition to that, they have these pretty good adaptive battery modes, and it does have adaptive charging as well, which will basically charge the phone steadily overnight, you can see right there, without kind of draining it and messing it up in the long term. So that's good for longevity. Also, you have an extreme battery saver mode right here if you really need it. I don't think you're gonna need it, but if you need it, it's there, pretty sweet. Overall, you could also set a schedule for this battery schedule based on percentage, based on routine. And the iPhone has the low power mode, which definitely helps it get through quite a bit of the day. But I would say if you're looking for the better battery life phone here, get the Pixel. And unlike some Samsung phones and some other Android devices, the Pixel has great standby as well. So you can leave this thing in your pocket and it's not gonna be draining battery all day. It's pretty good and efficient when it comes to standby. That's something you can't say about other Android devices. So really good on the battery. Now discussing the biometrics, we have Face ID here for the iPhone and over here for the Pixel, we have the Pixel imprint or, or the fingerprint sensor, whatever you wanna call it. I actually prefer the fingerprint sensor right now in our current time. Sometimes we're wearing a mask still and it's just easier to use this. Now the 
Face ID is cooler. It feels more cool to use. I think the Pixel, one of the Pixels had it, the 4XL, I believe it was. One of them had that face scanner, but they went back to the fingerprint. And I don't really have a problem with it. It's very snappy, very fast. I would say they're pretty much tied. It's just kind of down to per personal preference. Do you like unlocking with your face or do you like the fingerprint? The fingerprint is definitely an older technology, but the face ID, very cool, very fast as well. I enjoy both of them. It really just comes down to what do you prefer to use? When it comes to their connection types, they do have USB-C versus Lightning, and the USB-C is more universal, so I would say I'd give that a win to the Google Pixel 5a 5g because you use USB-C even on iPad Pros now, so it's something I think Apple should go to on their iPhones as well. Now, when it comes to charging, you do get a fast charger in the box with the Pixel 18 watts. Now, you don't get any charger in the box with the iPhone. So that's a value add as well. If you're looking for a charger in the box, you get it. They might go away with that on the Google Pixel 6 series, but for now, the Google Pixel 5a 5g does have a nice fast charger in the box. So talking about phone call quality, both of these are strong in this respect. They both have Qualcomm inside, so they have good si signal strength. They have good 5g performance on either of them. I don't have an issue recommending you either of these when it comes to the phone call quality. Now, one area where the iPhone 12 just walks away with an easy victory is the color options. I think it would have been nice to see a few color options here, maybe like a baby blue, maybe like a white, as well as this mostly black color, because you're kind of only getting this mostly black color here, which is kind of like a dark green color with a little bit of a hint of black in it. So, or you could say it looks mostly black with a little bit of green in it. Either way, the iPhone wins it out with color options. So at the end of the day, which is the better overall phone value? And when it comes to the value proposition, the Google Pixel 5a 5G walks away with this one. As a matter of fact, to keep this in mind, the iPhone 11 is more than the starting price of the Google Pixel 5a 5G. And there's a lot of wins over the iPhone 11. Let me know if you wanna see this versus the iPhone 11. The iPhone 12 is definitely the more premium device, but it's not by a lot. I honestly feel like you're getting most of what this phone offers here. Again, you're not buying iOS here. You're buying an Android phone. You're buying iOS here. But if you're okay with that, you're okay with switching, you're getting a very good overall com competitor here to the iPhone 12 for like $400 less. I mean, it doesn't really miss out much from what this phone offers, even with it having not nearly as fast as a CPU. You don't really notice it in everyday smartphone usage and what you probably are gonna most likely do with these phones. So I like both of them. It really comes down to personal preference, but Google definitely is not messing around with this one. This is a strong value offering, definitely better than the 4A and the 4A 5G of last year. So if you found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, do me a favor, click that like button for me and let me know what else you wanna see on the Google Pixel 5A 5G. I might compare it to some other iPhones as well as to some other Pixel devices. Let me know if you wanna see a speed test with these two as well. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here, be sure to be well. I will catch you all in the next episode and peace.